There are RVs and there are adventure RVs. We're going to take you inside the Global Expedition Vehicle and introduce you to the guy who's going to be full-timing in it. So tell me what this is. Well, this is a Global Expedition Vehicles Patagonia model. How big is it? Uh, it's about uh, 12 feet high and about 26 feet long and about 8 feet wide. What and where are you going to go with that thing? Well, what are you going to do and where are you going? Well, we're going to live full time in it and go wherever we want, I guess. Alaska, the Yukon, out west. And with those down tires... Any, down any road we feel like going down. <laughs> those tires will get you. <laughs> now you have moved up from a Class B, right? Yeah, we've got a 2008 RS uh, road truck. And you move into this. Tell me what this is. Look at that gas tank on this thing. 200 gallons of diesel. And uh, 130 gallons of fresh water. And uh, got a thousand watts of solar on the roof. 720 amps of lithium batteries in the back. And uh, a 6,000 watt own end generator. So you never run out of power, no matter where you are. Okay, Greg. Ballpark, what does something like that cost? Uh, well, the base price of the Patagonia model, like this, is uh, four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Four twenty. That's the base price. Then you customize from that. So. Let's take a look at it. Okay. Now I look on the roof, and you got an antenna farm sprouting up there. What What are all those antennas? Now well, we've got a WeBoost antenna, the fat one. We've got a serious. Uh, satellite radio antenna and a ham radio antenna and then the regular FM antenna for the truck. So it's got uh, everything you'd expect in an RV. It's got a queen size bed, uh, an oven. This is the refrigerator down here, drawer refrigerator. This is the freezer on the top and fridge on the bottom. It's a lot easier to load than the ones you've got. You've got a big freezer compared to what you have in most uh, most of them. And, uh, there's an induction cooktop underneath that cutting board there. Uh, wet bath with a cassette toilet. These are custom designed, the interior is whatever you want it to be. So we have a bench seat on one side, an office chair with a desk, the desk folds down on this side. Then to watch TV, this TV swings up and we sit on the bench and watch TV. And you got quite a control panel right here. Yeah, the left one, the red lights are the 12 volt DC panel and the green lights on the right are the 120 volt panel. And it's got a uh, Webasto dual top, uh, heating and hot water. How long did it take you to build this? It took them about uh, five months from when we signed the contract. We just picked it up three weeks ago, four weeks ago. So. Beautiful. I really like having the office chair. And look at the cockpit. We're going to live full time in it, selling our house. And we're going to be heading mostly to the western U.S., all of Canada, Alaska, Northern Canada, Yukon, as far as we can go, and uh, just spend the uh, next few years exploring all the West and Canada and Alaska, wherever we want to go, down any road we feel like going down. Now, why did you get an expedition adventure vehicle like this instead of maybe a big luxurious Class well, A? That was our plan. Our plan originally was to get a, sell our house and get a big Class A like everybody else with full times. And uh, we had bought our Road Trek Sprinter as an interim vehicle to take on, you know, shorter trips. So we went for six months to Alaska, and we went to Alaska from May to October, and uh, discovered that we clearly didn't want a big RV because the people in the big RVs were always stuck in RV parks and not getting into the places we wanted to go to. But then we also found that there were a lot of places we wanted, a lot of roads we wanted to go down that we couldn't go down in the Sprinter, just because of the clearance and uh, mm -hmm. not having four-wheel drive. And uh, so we started looking at something 
bigger with four-wheel drive. We realized we could live in a Sprinter, but we wanted to carry more stuff than you can carry in a Sprinter, and you've seen that too. You, you're limited. If you want to take a kayak and your bike and something else, it's just not going to happen on a Sprinter. Uh, so eventually, we looked at uh, went to Global Expedition Vehicles and looked at what they had, and they had just started building these this model on the Kenworth chassis, and that's what appealed to us. And uh, since it's custom, you get to pick everything you want inside. And now, how's your wife feel about it? She's worried that she's not gonna she's no, gonna she, miss the house after a while. Well, of course, there's always some of that. But she's uh, she's going to drive this. She went out in the parking lot in a big abandoned parking lot and drove it around. She loved driving it around, so she's going to be driving too. So the Sprinter I always tended to drive because she was sightseeing and taking pictures while while I was driving. But she wants to be able to drive this. So and it's it's not that hard to drive. It takes a little getting used to. Obviously, it's bigger, but not huge. Not like a 42 foot diesel, you know, RV. How long is this? 26 feet. See, I mean, our sprinter, yeah. our sprinter with either the stowaway on the back or our bike racks on the back was 25, 24, 25 feet. Right. So it's not much longer. Now it's wider. It's eight foot wide and it's 12 foot two, 12 foot four high. So you got to be careful there. But it's got the protection bars all along the top. So all the time you're going to hit branches because you're in campgrounds and places where the branches are low. But it deflects those off, so you don't have to worry about that. Now you might wonder what this behemoth gets in terms of gas mileage, eight miles a gallon. But then with a 200 gallon tank, you can go 1600 miles between fill-ups. I'm Mike Wendland. Thanks for watching and please be sure and check the subscribe button to be notified of other videos that we'll be having right here on our RV Lifestyle channel.